we head to the water now to join the world's oldest rowing club and explore the complex role of the cocks. So we have eight people rowing in our boat and there's eight different oars going in and if you can get those blades going in at the same time that can make all the difference. You have to get the blade in on time, you have to get the blade out on time, you have to roll up together. When you get out on the water and you're with eight other people and you have to row, you have to be precise. In the world of rowing, oarsmen are celebrated for their ability to combine power, skill and determination. In an eight-man boat, the responsibility of keeping them in sync and working together falls to the cocks. My role as a cox is, first of all, to steer the boat. And then I basically act as the translator between the coach and the athlete. Coaches will directly coach the athletes, but they'll also give me input, and I'll look after that on the water and be the eyes on the water. This one, go. Point to point. Push in. I have to initiate the race plans and keep all the technical points rolling out, basically. The Cox has a really important role because there's eight guys who all think very differently and could row very differently, so it's important that we're kind of her puppet as such, so she's just pulling the strings and she's the tactician, she's almost our brain, so we just do what she says, and when she calls for more, we, we give her more. Ready, go. Trying to get eight guys rowing very, very precisely together is quite a hard thing to do. They have to be like a ballet dancer, um, rowing in time with lots of synchronicity, but they also have to be producing lots and lots of wattage per, per person. She has to make sure that we don't go too early. We have to make it from A to B as fast as we can. So the idea is not to blow before the end. We have to be able to have a little bit left to just push ourselves further and further and further. I mean, some of the races are lost by one or two feet and that energy expenditure, she is in control of us. So she has to ensure that we will be on the right side of that one foot win. Communication between the Cox and Oarsman is fundamental to the effective implementation of race strategy. To keep the team rowing in harmony, the Cox must have a full repertoire of techniques to deliver the message and manage the work rate of the rowers. Most of the time it's really simple things. It can be things like just saying, okay, this next turn we're gonna get on the legs, ready, go, and the guys will just try and push a bit harder on the legs. Legs and hips, legs, hips, legs, hips. I'll also try and vary my tone and the volume, so I'll try and stay calm predominantly most of the time, but if it's really needed, you can get a bit more aggressive, it can be a bit louder, a bit quieter, and you can do all those things as well. You can change the volume on the cox box. But what you try and do is keep the guys relaxed, keep the guys calm, so that when the going gets tough and you really need to go somewhere, you've got somewhere to go with your vocals and, and they can change gear, basically. To get everyone rowing together, we do a lot of kind of mileage, we call it, just endless kind of plodding up and down. And as a nature of doing that, you kind of subconsciously just start moving together and rowing together. From being inside the boat, you can see when the timing goes off. Um, you can see if some of the guys are having a little bit of trouble making the same sort of shapes with their handles. You can call them up on it and try and help them make the change, let them know how to do it, if it's better, if it's not. Let's see if we can nail a direction with the hands around the front. And you can feel the changes in the boat, whether if they work, if they don't, and things like that. And just move together. To be a good cox, you've got to be confident, but you've got to have a really good relationship with the crew and the coach. At the end of the day, you cannot physically start pushing hard. Like, you cannot make a difference that way. All you can do is trick the guys into pushing harder when they really don't want to, or rowing better when they really don't want to. And when they're in that, pits of darkness and you've watched the whites drain from the stroke's eyes and you know that you've got to pull him back. Having a good relationship with them that you've earned and the mutual respect, that makes a difference. She's, yeah, she's a bit of a taskmaster, but she's, uh, she's very, very good. We're all our own, own individuals and she's got to try and bring us all together as a team. And I think that's probably one of the hardest jobs to do in the boat. It's very important. If you can work with the people that you're rowing with and you can make sure that you are within yourself and you're thinking about your own technique as well, you will make that boat go fast. And I think, technically, if you row as one, you'll fly.